million pounds stolen last year. Safe gang's record haul. Suspicions of bribery. Safe gang gets 50,000 pounds. Thieves outsmart Scotland Yard. Another bank robbed. Fifth raid this week. Central vaults blown. The crooks are using every modern scientific device whilst you stick to your old-fashioned methods. You mean informers, sir? Informers? Snouts? Call them what you like. Oh, come off it, Alec. You can't catch the bad boys with a lot of transistorized Meccano sets? Now, listen, John, no, I'm not here to argue the point. Apart from what I think, there's an official order out. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. But I feel rather strongly about this. So do I, John, now. But you know as well as I do, it's people that matter in this business. You've got to be able to, to see the look behind their eyes when you talk to them. Oh, I know you can tap their telephones with this electronic gadget and use this lark here. But it's no good just overhearing conversation. You've got to be able to... Well, you know what I mean. If you spend your time amongst crooks, some of their grounds bound to rub off onto you. Not only are we not catching the villains, but accusations are being made far too frequently against us. From now on, we're going to work together scientifically as a team. And no one's going to be able to point a finger of doubt at us. The old methods are out. No more fraternizing with crooks, no more snuts. Understood? That's all then, gentlemen. Well, I suppose that'll mean a pound off me pension. I'm bloody sure it'll mean a pound off mine. Oh, I think the old man knows you well enough, sir. Still, there's only what he says, you know. Bah. I'm just about lying handy behind these bank boys, whoever they are. And if he thinks I'm going to cut myself off from the grapevine now, he can go and... Tell me, are you wearing rubber heels? Naturally. Thank God for that. I thought I'd gone deaf. Bogey Fred will be at the Charing Cross stop, right? Here. Have a cigar, Charlie. And keep your snipe money. I told you, he, he may not even turn up today. God, you make me sick. If anybody had told me that Charlie Ruskin would end up with a snipe for our brother and a... Listen, Jim. I've come up special today to ask you why there's still time. I've got a good business now, look. I've got cards and all printed. Ruskin Brothers, you and me together. All you gotta do is come in. And rub to myself heaving all that junk about. No. Chief Inspector John Owen. Come here. Get in there. Oh. Go on. In there. Now you stay here and let talk to him, right? Now you poke your face out just once and I'll flatten it. Do you understand that? Mr. Jono? Charlie Raskin. Now that's not bad for a cover. What was it last time? Ah, yes. Three years for knocking off a truck with a cigarette. Ah, that was a long time ago. Jim tells me we're going straight now. Dealing in scrap. So you've had him snouting at me too, have you? 
What are you doing here, Charlie? I've come to tell you that Jim is finished. Oh. Well, I thought he was old enough to uh, speak for himself. Jim's done too much speaking. From now on, he's working for me. Oh, very professional. Hell of a draft on this side. Hello, Jim. I was just saying to Charlie, there's a hell of a draft on that side. All right, go on, tell him. No, Charlie boy, don't rush me. John and me has got a sort of contract. You ought to be ashamed of yourself hooking a poor little sod like this. Well, no one's twisting his arm. Listen, Jim. One of these days, some mob's going to get wise to you and have your ears off. And you know what he'll do? Not to the next mug on his list. No, he plays fair with me, and I play fair with him. Charlie, you don't understand. This, this is a partnership. I've never had it so good. And that's how it's going to stay. I used to think a snout was the lowest kind of vermin. But now I know there's one thing lower. That's the copper that keeps him at it. He should be in a box in Hyde Park, banging his tambourine. Hmm? He's a good lad, Charlie. But he doesn't understand friendship. You don't have to go on starting for me, you know that. You kidding? Can you see me collecting junk? Loading rubble onto six-ton trucks. Heaviest thing I've ever lifted is a double brandy. <laughs> well, what's new? Um, apart from family problems. Mick Lonigan did the central bank job. Ah, come off it. You put me on Lonigan's back three times already. Lonigan, Shorty Sparks and Fred Hill. They did the job, so help me. But we didn't catch them with our fingers in the till, and we didn't find a note of that money when we shook them up. They sold it. I know. But who bought it? The bloke you want. The hot money broker. The paymaster general. And you're going to tell me who it is, huh? Could be. How do you fancy that pawns, Bertie Hoyle? What, him? Why, he hasn't got the brains to... Pick the fluff out of his navel, let alone organize these bank jobs. Six months ago, he was glad to make a nigger cheating at poker. Now who's got the bloody great Bentley? Hey! Hey, Dave! What do you think of this thing? I owed you the first time. Hey, come on down. Come on down, will you? Here you are, then. Hey, nothing but the best. Thanks, Mr. Hoyle. Here you are. Here you are. Hello, love. Been busy? We're in the wrong racket. Who says birds don't pay? Hey, don't I, don't I get a ride, Nick? Well, come on to the pub. I'm paying for it. No, Bertie, I don't want to. Suit yourself. <laughs> For a change, mate. <laughs> See you tomorrow at Newmarket, Bertie. That might very well be, you never know. You better watch it, because I'm going to be laying down in grand. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Put me out of business. You and me, I'm glad I did. Might very well be. Hey, barman, we'll have doubles round for everybody, or oh, doubles for you. Yes. No, no, what about beer. some beer for her? Oh, yeah. Brandy. What's the matter with you? Can't you take a little joke? All right, then give her a brandy. <laughs> Relax, darling. It's your night off, ain't it? Besides, 
It might be our big night a bit later on, eh? Poor cow. Yeah, but what about the time, mate? No, it's all there. Ready? Going away. And that's how I like to hear them. Going away. How are we doing, Shorty? Bang on. There's a vault. All right, I'll shove the gear through. Now, will you? Well, hello, Blackbird. Tell me now, you were uh, just flown in. Uh-huh. Uh, would you like to try my nest? Yeah. Try your nest? Uh, Did you hear that one? Oh, yeah. would you know? Hey, Maisie! Hello, Maisie! Do you know what? Uh, I, I think she wants me to go home with her. What? All the way to Africa? You Bye. stupid bitch. What do you know about uh, such things, eh? Drop what? dead. Or maybe about 80 years, maybe. <laughs> What are you gaping at? All right, Leon. Yeah, OK, so far. Uh, yeah, sure. Ooh, up. Oh. Can I get you a beer? Yeah, half. Half a beer. Barman, half a beer. She's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. I'll have double scotch, thank I you. I thought you wanted a gin, then. No, I've changed my mind. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Hello, police. I want to report that I've just seen some blogs breaking into a building at the back of Lombard Street. Lombard Street. I think it's the bank, the Metropolitan Bank. Yes, yes, thank you. I've got that. This is R4 to HQ1, R4 to HQ1, and proceeding to Metropolitan Bank, Lombard Street. Anonymous call of attempted break-in. Listen, you hear that? Metropolitan Bank, Lombard Street, miles away. Well, how about that, then? Male informant, anonymous. A good friend Bird is giving the squad a little exercise tonight. Should we take Pearl down the club then, Humpy Boy? That's a smashing idea. Well, she could time, time, innit? Yeah, she's a smashing dancer, you know. Yeah, can you dance? Oh, she's yeah. the greatest. Well, Lewis, sit down. Do you mind, sir? That's somebody else's order. Oh, that's a crime? Shame, yeah, well, it's a double crime. Well, she's time, been on for 20 minutes already. Hey, wait a minute. How about some service then? Certainly, Mr. Hoyle. Tell me something. Do you always let that cow gab like that? All right, Mr. Hoyle, I'll get her off the phone in a minute. You do that! Yeah. What? Do you want to get me done over? Crap. Who's who's crazy? Some drunk wanted to know if he could buy that new Bentley out front. Sounds like a bloke's coming to money, then. Eh? <laughs> yeah, think how I'll be getting along, Mr. Hoyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that's it, then, lads, then. Oh. <laughs> now, don't you fly away too far, little black bird. I'll look after the bird. Look after it. <laughs> yeah. Come on, will you? Come. Look, if you don't want to go, I can think of a good reason why I could stay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, then, darling. Come on, Henry. Come on. Come on. Stop shoving! I've been pushing around enough today. Good, I'm in the mood.
Oh. <laughs> it's only old double guts Ruskin, stewed as usual. I'll be wanting a receipt for 135 grand, boy. Enough for a whole fleet of Bentleys. Yeah, a third in each one. Who was the drunk? Nobody special. He's got eyes and a tongue, hasn't he? There's only old double guts Ruskin. Paralytic. Ruskin? Maybe he'll tell me why he ran away like a scarlet cut after you left. Oh, I booted him, didn't I? He may be looking for a telephone. Or another drink. Shorty, go and get him. Why me? Mr. Hall's not going to want any loose ends, is he? Go and find him. Go on. Jono. Um, Mrs. Jono, can I help you? I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm afraid I'm drunk. Yes, so But listen, I, I must speak to Mr. Jono. He's not here. I've just seen Lonigan and Anne is locked. Look, uh, hold on, I get a pencil. Paralytic drunk. Ruskin was in the pub tonight. He's just seen you lot coming in here. What happens when he reads about this in tomorrow's papers? What are you so worried about? You don't keep a guilt. No, but I can't have a count. Yes? It's OK. I found him. Yeah, in this telephone box. Passed out cold. Did he talk to anyone? Uh, I don't know whether he phoned anyone, but the receiver was off his hook. Where is he? Where is he? Oh, I'm standing on him. <laughs> You stupid idiot. Yeah, OK, OK. Look, put him in the car. Take him to your drum in Essex. Hey, hey, wait a minute. How do you know about my drum in Essex? Never you mind. You get in there. And you lot can get going, too. Who are you ordering about? You're Mr. Nobody's been on the floor. Rallying <coughs> boy. Calling a cab to take him home. The law may be on the way now. <laughs> you losing your nerve? Well, use your loaf. The fellow's been on the floor. He could have snouted on us. These are new notes. We can't ship them. Yeah, well, look. I'll tell you what, I'll, uh, I'll see Mr. Hoy, but these lot can't stay here. Look, now, you hold up at Harmy's place. Hold up with Harmy until I come for you. I'll fix it for you. Now, don't worry. You know what it is, don't you? Come on, lad. Come on, lad. Come on. Now, don't worry. I'll, uh, I'll look after you. Now, you tell me, darling, how much did you take today, eh? How much? You don't need that. I can't help myself. It's habit for him. Put it back. You've had enough from me and I'd pay you rent. Well, what's the matter then? The school fee's going up. Leave off, Bertie. I told you never to mention that. Mention? Mention what, Maisie? You know. You promised to say nothing again. Now, come on now. You tell me, because I'm very interested to know. Has he got your sweet nature? Cut it out, Bertie! If you mention him again, I'll kill you! All right, then. If that's the way you want it, then you take it! Go on, you get out of here. Go on, you cow, you scum. Come on, get out of this room. No. Come on! Bertie, Get out of please, I don't want to go. Keep it, keep it all. There's nothing for us to fight about. Please, Bertie, I don't want to go. What have I got to do to get rid of you? Tell me. I want to know. Eh? Bertie. Have I got to liven you up a bit, Maisie? No. Is that it? Bertie, don't, please. Because I'm not kidding with you, Maisie. Don't. I'm not kidding Bertie, at all. Bertie, don't! 
Why don't you get your hooks out of me? Hey! Bobby! I don't understand you. Why do you stay with me? You'll never know anything, will you? Why? I want to know. I rob you. I belt you. Blimey, I would have knocked you down those stairs. So why do you want me? Because... If I haven't got you, I might as well be dead. What do you want? Sorry, Bertie. There's a fellow wants you on the Odi Cologne. What fellow's that? Leon. What the hell? Well, I told him to wait till tomorrow, but he wouldn't have it. Why not? They're sending up, Bertie. Right, come on. What did he have to phone me for? Hey, why? I told him never. This is the one bloody night that I. Oh. Hello. Well, what did you have to phone me for? I thought everything went off one, two, three. Well, it didn't. Somebody saw the lads bringing their swag into my place. Ah, oh, fella called Ruskin. Jim Ruskin. A shorty statement to his, uh, his drum in Essex. Now listen, Bertie. This is your job. And it's got to be done. Well, you leave him to me then. Oh. <laughs> Okay, Shorty, you can go home. Take my card and dump it, will you? <laughs> Boy, I'm glad to see you. Hey. Oh. Give me the keys of the Velox, will you? Oh. Two questions I want answered from you. Who are you snouting for, and what did you tell him on the blower this morning? What the attack? Just about, give but... me the answers. Now, which bogey are you snouting for? Look, if you're talking about last night, I was so drunk I haven't a clue. Uh, I... What... Which bogey are you snouting for, Jim? Hmm? Um... Now, don't you ever say I never warned you. He'll get you, Bertie. Who? He'll get you. Who? Me? Who? Come on now. All right, it was a false alarm. A waste of time. Morning, George. Morning. Tip offs. Informers. I don't know why you bother with them. Well, sometimes they come up with a winner. A good start's worth his corn. Uh, yeah, get me speedwell 3154, will you? Morning, Johnny. Morning. No dice again? Hello, Ian. Hello, darling. Uh, just a minute. Are you still there, darling? Hello, yeah. Uh, darling, a man called and said he'd seen 
Lonergan and his lot. They'd done a job for Bertie Hoyle and they took the stuff to Leon Sale's place. Leon Sale? Well, what, uh, what time was this? Oh, about three o'clock. Last, that's, that's over four hours ago. Yeah, well, well, go on. What else? Did he say where he'd be? Have you seen the message book? No. Well, those bank boys were at it last night. They did a job in Whitechapel and knocked off about 135,000 pounds. Well, that's a tip we should have had. We did have it. Jim Ruskin tried to get me last night. He telephoned and left a message saying a job had been done and the stuff taken to a place in Soho. Whose place? Somebody called Sale. Leon Sale. You might see if he's got any form, will you? Yeah, we'll do. Oh. Excuse me. I thought I should tell you. Sorry, all right. A message has just come in about a certain Jim Ruskin. What about him? His body's been found. Run over. But I understand it's a question of murder. He, um, he was one of your helpers, wasn't he? Sorry. Do you know he hung on for a long time for a snap? Yeah. The bogey he was snapping for was Inspector Jono. Did you get that? Yeah, anything else? Yeah, well, he said he, he tried phoning Jono's house this morning, but the old boy wasn't in, so he left a message with his missus saying that he saw Lonigan, Hill and Shorty leave the stuff at your place. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? What did you do with Ruskin? <coughs> I, uh, I did what you told me to do. I, I left his body uh, outside the barn and I used Shorty's velox on him. Mm. What, uh, what happens when... Oh, they... not to worry. You'll be in the clear. That short is a nasty character. He doesn't know his own strength, does he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you better get some sleep, Bertie. I'll see you later. You don't have to come, you know, Jeff. Why not? Well, it's uh, off the record. Yeah, I know. Disinfectant. You sleep late. I'm a night watchman. Not very warm. Yeah, I just turned in. Oh. You can't turn me over. Oh, yes, we can. And very professionally. Hey, what do you want? What, what do you want? Oh, I don't know. The, uh, the Lonigan swag, perhaps? Now, the only swag you'll find here is what you plant yourself. You, um, you run for Bertie Hoyle, don't you? Well, I take messages for him from time to time. What of it? Doesn't pay you very much, does he? Or if he does, you must be saving up to buy yourself an annuity. What do you mean? Well, where are the silk shirts, the gold cufflinks, the, uh, the platinum wristwatch? You're too good to be true. 
I could report you for this, Mr. John Orr. You do that, Mr. Sale. Five minutes. Hello, Charlie. I just want to say how sorry I. Here's half a hundred from the from the fund. Go on, he was entitled to it. Haven't you done your bit? If you're worried about the funeral expenses, I'll bury them. Now, Charlie, this is more than a routine call for me. I promise you I'm going to make it my business to find Your out business? If you're the best damn copper in London, you couldn't sort this one out. Have you seen them? All of them? No, you do this one to me. No, this is the work of a mob. If you've any ideas, maybe we can help each other. Like you helped him? Isn't one dead snout in the family enough for you, Mr. Jono? Sir? The old man's just been on the blower. They want you back at the factory right away. Does he? Yes, you'd better wait. Come in. You wanted to see me, Ellie? Yes. Now, look, I understand you took a car down to the mortuary. Well, what do you expect me to do? Go by bus? Don't try and bounce me, Jono. What did you go down there for? Well, I'm awfully sorry, Jono. I'm rather afraid it was my fault. Uh, you see, I needed a car, and your driver reported your position. You copper. All right, Jono. You can go, Smythe. And what exactly were you doing down there? I went down to the mortuary because last night one of my... A man was murdered. He's been a great help to the yard, and he was a friend. You would have done exactly the same. Oh, no, I wouldn't. We don't have friends among crooks anymore. It was the whole point of my talk, only you weren't listening. You still think you can make your own rules. Now, cut it out, Jono. And so far as Jim Ruskin goes, leave him to the murder squad. Will you hold it? I tell you, I want to get out in the road again. What's the point? You're not doing any good charging around this bloody thing like it's a squad car, are you? Why didn't ever get the boys in? I told you, I don't want to get caught up again. Well, you're not doing very well by yourself, are you? No, I'm going to have a kip. Well, you've got a nerve, haven't you? Now, listen, Charlie. We're both after the same thing. Now, do we play it together, or do I play cop? Meaning? Well, there is such a thing as withholding information. I've got no information. I'm in the dark, same as you. But, uh, you're looking. Who for? Mick Lonigan? Why him? Well, Jim saw him last night with his crew. Fred Hill and Shorty Spark shifting swag. Soon after that, he was killed. Don't be ridiculous. Those boys are screwsmen, professionals. Killing's not in their line. Perhaps they're just taking it up. Don't forget, 
Jim snouted on them. Snout, snout, snout. You'll have us all dead with your snouting. Well, you're not getting me in the hook. Come to that. You've no right to be here. Very true. All right, Charlie. Oh, by the way, the last time the boys pulled a job like this, they held up somewhere in Bethnal Green. If you hear anything, give me a ring. Charlie! Charlie, how about the boys? Tommy, the shot, Charlie, you know, Tommy. Ah, yeah, I don't know. Hello, so. Charlie. Uh, very sorry to hear about your brother, Charlie. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look, Charlie's got a bunch of his mates waiting upstairs. Well, you know, they know this man are backwards. Well, let's go see him. Oh, you better report the car back to Smile. He may want to move a fighting cap or something. Oh, go on, go on, go on, go on. Just like the old times. Hey, just a minute, just a minute. I'm back for one job only. I told them, Charlie. Go, no, please, just a minute. I want to find Mick Lottery. And the white chap. Keep the swag. Hello, Charlie. Have a little nausea. Hello, Angel. Angel! I've got to get out of this drum, Shorty. I've got a fever. To do you a bit of good and all. Oh, this junk. This stinking smell. Now, look, I mean, when are you going out again? I need some lozenges, and I've got to have some of them cool smokes. Yeah, all right, Freddie, I'm trying. I think of the risk I run. Well, what are they paying you for, then? I know, I know, but I can't go out so much. Already they're asking me, what are you feeding your birds on? Scotch, are they smoking king size? When you go, get all the papers. All right, I'll get them all. <laughs> get your skate on, I want to see them papers and all. Leave, boys, I've got the birds to feed. Stop your lousy birds! Oh, go on, get out. And don't let anybody in until I've gone. You're trying to get nicked. I can hear you three blocks away. Hello, Liam boy. How's Mr. Hoyle? When do we get shot of this goat? Not until this other little matter's been settled. You've seen this. And I'm surprised at you shot him. Why do you do it? You didn't do Rushkin. I told you. Just left him there. You bloody well know who done him. You must know. So well, we're Ruskin. What about this? Oh, yes, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Hoyle did say to tell you that he'll take it in a couple of days. A couple of days more? In this stinking hole? It'll come easier in stir. Can't you? Push it along, boy. I've told you. Ruskin's dead. But not buried. You'll have to wait. And what the hell do you want with that? You want to know? I'm taking them to the bank to see if they caution. you. What's this then, Bertie Hoyle's new place? Of course, you're aware this isn't a scheduled stop. I'll be about 15 minutes. Well, you're not going in. There's a squad car across the road. It looks as if we've got a visitor. I should take a look round the back. Yeah, yeah, all right. There's a law car. Why, the muse? <laughs> yeah. Is Mr. John out? Well, we've got nothing to hide. Let him in. What? Oh, let him in, let him in, let him in. Hmm. Let him see how the other half lives.
And a dollar to wash her down, mate. You're not on the east end now, cock. We're talking pounds up here. Hello, sir. Wouldn't you like to come and have a look around inside? If you'd have knocked three times and asked for Mabel, I'd have let you in the front door. Oh. Bit of a change, isn't it, for you lot to have a front door? This way, sir. Well, what do you think of the place, then? Well, that's nice. Must have cost a packet. I'm prepared to pay for what I get. <laughs> Drink. Cigar. Cigarette. I only smoke when I'm worried. Well, you've come up in the world in the last six months, haven't you? You've got pretty nearly everything. Makes a change, don't it? But, do you know what I'd really want? I'd like a policeman, you know? One I can call my very own. You've been highly recommended. You know, what I'm really looking for are some nice, new, clean notes. Now, where would I get nice, new, clean notes from? Well, my information about you is, I hope, more accurate than your information about me. What? We all make mistakes, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> and one of yours was Jim Ruskin. Ruskin? Oh, you mean that geezer got done over the other night? Oh, you know about that, hmm? Well, you know, I learned how to read when I was a very small kid. Where were you on Tuesday night? Tuesday? I was at uh, Jack's Club. I got witnesses, you know. There was uh, out of the farm. Where was your Jack car? Club. My car? Hmm, that Bentley. Oh, <laughs> my Bentley! That never left the West End. I've got witnesses to prove where well, I was all There were tire marks by the body. You won't find any blood on my tires. So neither you nor it were anywhere near the body of Jim Ruskin. Huh? Yeah, that's right. I've got all the witnesses in the world. Mm, I'm sure you have. Next time you come, give us a tinkle. I'll have all those nice new notes you're looking for. The next time I come around, I'll give you more than a tinkle. <gasps> oh. Temper, temper. Now it's getting nasty. Mind how you go. Fall down. Uh, All the best, gorgeous. Ta da! <laughs> then he comes along and he says to me, Where was your car? I said, My Bentley. I said, My Bentley never left the mews all night. I said, You won't find any blood on those tires. Oh, you stupid idiot. What? You stupid, bloody idiot. Well, what have I done? What? Well, the papers didn't say anything about him being run over. They didn't say how he was killed. Oh, my God. Yeah, but I didn't say anything to him that, that, that any, any innocent person wouldn't have said to him. Did I? Oh, well, what did I say? What did I say? I just said you won't find anything on my tire. What are we going to do? We're going to get out? Get out? After I've lived like this for six years, give over. Oh, no. No, I'm not going to throw away all we've made on account of one of your stupid mistakes. The success of our partnership has always been due to the fact that I'm always one step ahead for Mr. John Hall. No, well, that's no good. I've already tried it. Then you can't have gone about it the right way, can you? Mr. Jono's not going to get a chance to refuse these. And while we're at it, go on, you can put your 500 in your pocket again. If you're a good boy, I'll show you how to have a real go to. Well, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I would. <laughs> Blimey, Maisie. A ruddy nursemaid. It's her, kid. Don't you ever let her know I told you so, though. Come on. Her place now. You have a nice walk, Bobby. Where did you go? We went from the heath to hide the ice cream. We saw the boat sailing on the pond. Well, be an expert, there, Bobby. Would you like an electric boat or one of those sailing boats? 
I'd like one I could sail in with you, Mummy. <laughs> you never know. One day, perhaps. Could I build one? Yeah. That's one up. Good morning, Mum. Ada, stop. I'll be off on his lunch. No, Bobby, give Ada a hand. There's a dear. Hey, don't push me like that, eh? I told you never to come to this place. Well, I'm sorry. I couldn't find a phone. Why not? Maisie, I've got a very important job for you. For God's sake, I'll see you later at my place. Yeah, well, that's where I want you to go, but I want you to go there right now. The child's only got a day or two from school. Sweetheart, it's not just what I say, you know. Well, I don't care what anybody says. Bertie, I'm not going. Do you want me to tell that kid of you what no, you like? No, no, no! Now, look, it's important to me, Maisie. I need you. Maisie, I'm telling you, it's perfectly all right. You don't have to do nothing. What will you put to do? Just sit there. You're in no danger. I promise you. None of... You're going to do it for me, aren't you? Hey? Hmm? There's some things even I'm not crazy enough to do. Who would take my word against a copper? Your word, your word won't even come into it. The pictures... The... Maisie, look. There's 500 quid in it for you, darling, if you do it. Is that hot? It's mine. It, it's come from my own bank. Just think what you can do with it all, eh? Well, who sent for the bloody undertaker? He's not the undertaker. He's my friend. Didn't know you had any friends. Maisie, the joking, just for a minute. Huh? Uh, Edna, darling, will you leave us alone? Hmm? Did you bring your, your little machine? Ooh. And he brought his tape measure, too. Maisie, look, will you just leave us alone just for a minute, eh? Uh, mate, look, will you have a deco up here? I think that if we put the camera on that ledge, we'll... Just get up those glasses and have a look. We put the camera on that ledge, and we can put all those rolls of paper around it, and you'll never see a thing in a million years. Uh, is, is that okay then, mate? Hey, all right? You'll have to get right in the corner. Uh, in, in the corner, in the corner, no, no. Hey. Look, Jono's got a stand. Stand right on this. That's, this is right, isn't it? You've got to stand here on this. Well, do you spot. want me to chalk a little circle and ask him to stand in it? Do you want... Well, how do... I don't know. I'm trying my best, aren't I? Everything I know. I say, put a chair there. Maybe she can get him to sit on it. That'll make dead sure. Yeah, all right. How's that then? Is That's that all better. Right? Now, tell the meadow lady to kneel beside you. Meadow lady. Hey, watch it, mate. Darling, look. Just do what country boy says, will you? Now, you, you're going to do it for me. Oh, you know, you're crazy, Bertie. If this doesn't work, you know I'll go to jail, no, don't you? Darling, it's going to work. I wouldn't let you do it if I didn't think it was going to work. It, it will work, won't it? Oh, I don't want any part of it. Macy! I'm sorry about the kid. It's very important for me. Darling, after Jono's fixed, we'll go away together. With the boy. Do you really mean that? I'll teach him how to swim. I'll take it. Yeah, I thought Bertie said I was the going with this lot. No, no, Mr. John is going to get this little lot from me personally. It's all right, don't fat.
What's the matter with you? Speaking. Who? Maisie Barton? No, I can't say I do. Bank job? Well, what's it all about? Well, have you reported it? Sixteen Dean Court. All right, I'll be around in about twenty minutes. All right, all right. Go on, move. Move, leave it. Go on, get down and meet him. Come in, Mr. John. Now. Care to look at a magazine? Oh, just like the dentists. <laughs> oh, not exactly. Looking around. You must be the bogeyman. Well, one of us is overdressed. Did you come on your own? That's what you wanted, wasn't it? Oh. Wouldn't talk to you otherwise. Have a fag. Sit down. You didn't say much on the phone. Why'd you call me? Oh, I heard you were so handsome. Let's skip the factory, shall we? Why pick on me? Why not the local police? That lot? I've got news for you. I've only got to say hello and they think it's an invitation. You're Bertie Hoyle's bit, aren't you? Now listen, do you want the boys that did the bank job a couple of nights ago? What bank job? Hell, you know that bank in Whitechapel. Was in all the papers? Oh. Well, that's quite a coincidence. Oh? What's that? 
Well, your pal Bertie Hoyle. He reads the papers, too. Thank you. That's supposed to mean something. You tell me. What are you talking about? How did you know I was on this case? Who told you? A little bird told me. Look here. I'm not used to blokes coming here to walk around. Is she staying here, too? Go on, get out. Do me a favour. Sit down. Take the weight off your feet. That's more like it. Well? Excuse me. Just in case that creepy maid thinks of earwigging. What's wrong with you? I don't know. I'm not quite sure. Right. Strictly business. As coming from Bertie Hoyle's bit. Or should I say X? X? What do you mean, X? Ah. Well, it's the old, old story. I'm getting too old to be knocked about. I've had it. Well, why don't you leave him? <sighs> Wake up. I can't leave him. No? I can make him leave me. Yeah. I can shop him. How? He was in on the Whitechapel job. I found these in his dressing gown. Now... Why don't you tell me the real reason why you brought me here? What are you talking about? I have told you the real reason. Oh, no, you haven't. You read the papers, you say? Well, in that case, you must have read that the Whitechapel money was all in new notes. And these are very, very old. So it looks as though you and your chum, Bertie, will be shacking up for some time to come. But if in the meantime you get some more bright ideas, give me a ring. You know my telephone number, I believe. Yes, sir. Uh, right, sir. The old man wants a volunteer for a special assignment. Never volunteer for anything, unless you're ordered to. Well, I'll try anything once, unless either of you two would like a change. Carry your bag, sir. Come in. Something special on, sir? Yes, I'd like this uh, photograph copied. It's an enlargement from a cine film. I'd like the woman identified. She's clearly a Tom. And see if there's any record of her making complaints against police officers. This uh, looks like John O, sir. It is. Chief Inspector John O. Now, by the way, use a little discretion. Hi, Dick. Uh-huh. Oh, John Yeah? He's trying to find you. Well, you found me. Now what? The super would like a word with you. Yes. And he wants to see your diary. To say anything in answer to the allegation that you accepted 500 pounds from this woman? Oh, for God's And that God's it wasn't for the first time. If you're going to take the word of a tart, do you deny accepting the money? Of course I do. And this photograph's a fake. Of course. No, it's not a fake. She must have some camera rigged up or something. Huh? Well, I've told you. I went to see her. She showed me some notes, and I could see they were old, and not, as she said, from the Whitechapel job. May I make an observation, sir? Mm -hmm. well, the notes may have been dirty deliberately. How did the Chief Inspector know? How did the Chief Inspector know what? That the notes were not from the Whitechapel job. All right, smart. I'm conducting this investigation. Now, this diary is up to date. There's no mention in it of you calling on this woman. All right, so I didn't enter it in the diary. 
Look, I know I've taken some risks, but I've one of the best records on the squad. Oh, come off it, Jono. It's no good trying to change the subject. Look, Alec, can't you see? I'm convinced I'm lying handy behind these people who are organizing these bank jobs. I've turned them over, I've worried them. And I believe they're behind this Ruskin business. This picture is their way of trying to shake me off. You turned them over? When was this? Well, four days ago. You don't seem to have thought fit to enter that either. Well, it wasn't official. Had you a warrant? Of course I didn't have a warrant. Who was it then you turned over without a warrant? Well, a character called Bertie Hoyle, for one. Hoyle? God's name, why? Well, he runs flats for the Tom trade. He's got an interest in a score of clubs and betting shops. You're what better set up for getting rid of hot money? Don't tell me that Ponce is your Mr. B. No, he's just window dressing. I think there's someone else. Just who is this someone else who's escaped the attention of everyone at the yard but yourself? Sale. Leon Sale. Sale. Never heard of him, sir. Has he a record? Yes, sir. One minor conviction six years ago for fraud. One minor conviction six years ago. Well, he's shrewd, he's got brains, and he's cunning. And he's had commando training. Now, he shared the same cell with Hoyle, and I think that's where they teamed up together. Since Hoyle came out, we've had one bank job after another. Everyone organized like a commando raid. Hmm. So you've taken it upon yourself to investigate these characters. Have you found one single piece of evidence, one concrete fact we can act upon? Well, no, not yet, Alec, but... Chief Inspector Jono, your story may or may not be true, but I think I have good reason for doubting every single thing you said. You deliberately ignored my instructions to break your old contacts with criminals, and I think these explain quite clearly your reluctance to do so. Anyway, I intend to find out the truth. In the meantime, you're suspended from duty. Arrange the usual search and check his desk and locker. Some sort of game. This is very unpleasant for me, Mary. I'll be the one to have to tell you that uh, John has been suspended. Suspended? Whatever for? I, I've been accused of taking bribes. And now they want to search the house. But this is ridiculous. Well, of course it is. Nothing I can say will make them believe me. Well, what do they hope to find? Search me, and they already have. Ashamed of yourselves. Alec, you've known John all these years. You're Jennifer's godfather. I'm sorry, Mary, but I have my duty to do. Try and be as careful as we can. John. Can't you take your hat off? Hardly the place to keep hot money. Do you mind? I want to talk to my husband. All right, so you start. I can't do anything. Jennifer's asleep. I'm not asleep. Jennifer. Are you having a party? <laughs> well, yes, chick. 
sort of a party. Hello, Jennifer. Excuse me, sir. She's asleep. Excuse me, please. No, Wendy's tired. No, Wendy's tired. No, Wendy's tired. You wouldn't like to search the child herself, would you? You know as well as I do, Jono. It's got to be done. Attic? Hmm? Yeah. Sergeant Chair, please. I could have a look at something, sir. What is it? Can't you fetch it down? I don't want to be accused of planting evidence, sir. I uh, happen to have the numbers of the notes taken in the Whitechapel job, sir. I got a copy from records. Well, I, I didn't put... I don't know who put them there, but I'm damn sure it wasn't my husband. Trusted you, Jono, completely. Now I'll make it my personal business to break you completely. John Edward Jono, you are charged on a warrant, A, that you did accept the sum of 500 pounds from Maisie Barton as a corrupt gift to do or forbear to do something contrary to your duty. In this case, Your Worship, I respectfully ask for remand in custody for one week after short evidence of arrest. Remanded in custody for one week. I... Send the bag. Mick, you and uh, Freddy, bring the money round to Mr. Hoyle's place. Six o'clock tomorrow morning, you get your pay off on the spot. Oh, a real good boy. boy. What about me? Oh, it's all fixed. Mr. Hoyle's leaving the country in a couple of days' time. He'll take you with him. Uh, what about my wife? Well, the yard's looking for you, Shorty. We've got to get you out of the way. Are you trying to shop me? Oh, grow up, Shorty. You'll get your share. You'll get a new passport and a free trip to Monte Carlo and a bucket of suntan lotion thrown in. <laughs> <laughs> OK, six o'clock in the morning, round the back. First door in the mews. Harmy will fix a car for you. Right. Well... I don't know about you, pair of mugs, but my name's Walker. I'm off. Well, what's the matter with you? Nothing yet, and I'm making sure it ain't gonna be. Sit down. Don't you see he's trying to shop me for this Ruskin job? But two can play at this shopping game. Don't be a fool, Shorty. We're all in the show together. We've got the guilt. We'll see you get your whack. Hello, what you got there then? Oh, you're a beauty. Hey, look. That's Cuban. Anything new? 
No, just the same. Hello, then. What do you reckon she wants? Crazy paving or a load of horse manure? No, neither. She's an intellectual type. Piano player. Wants a baby ground hold up six flights of stairs, do you? Charlie Ruskin. At your service, madam. I'm Mrs. Jono. You know my husband was framed. Sure. Never knew a crook who wasn't. He's not a crook. <laughs> That's not what it says here, darling. He was framed by a prostitute named Maisie Barton. And somebody planted money from the Whitechapel Bank in our home. Well, isn't that a shame? You know, some people got no morals, have they? Well, well, he really is in it, isn't he, Mrs. J? He's in it because he was trying to find the men who killed your brother. <laughs> Please, will you help me find this Maisie Barton? Look, lady, this is a scrapyard, not the missing persons bureau. Yeah. Yeah, and I get all I need without chasing tarts. Think I'm wasting my time. Yeah, looks like it. Hey, Charlie. Well, old John always was straight, wasn't he? Yeah, I know. Well, what do you reckon? Do you think he was, Frank? Could well be. Yeah. You ever heard of this Maisie Barton? Yeah. She's pretty hoist, bird. Ooh. We don't meddle with her, then, do we? I'm not so sure. Do you remember Lou Waits? What? Chris Cross, Lou? He used to be hot for her. Then he found out she had a kid tucked away somewhere. Started spreading the story around, just for laughs. Oh. Then Hoyle caught up with him and... Uh, I reckon that Lou won't have forgotten that in turn, huh? Yeah. Let's go see him. Where's the kid's father, eh? Bertie Hoyle? Are you crazy? Old Hoyle could have his little knives. I suppose she goes with him. Ah, she's a working girl. There. There you are. Now, give us a kiss. Go on inside, there's a seat. Write me a letter. Write me a letter. Now make sure she gets a good look at you. Then you know what to do. Okay, on you go. Write me a letter. I want to hear from you. I'm a friend of a friend. What's the rush? Get lost or I'll call the police. Which one, Inspector General? Who? Makes you think, doesn't it? Well, I'm waiting. Go on. Shut your bleeding head off. Hat and coat. What's all this about? Tight. Well, what's going on? Jeff! Come on, you want it upstairs. Oh, what for? There's been an application for bail. Yeah. Well, who's doing this? How much? Darling. 250 pounds, but who? I did. On your life policies. Wonderful, darling. I could never have managed it without him. What have you two been up to, hmm? You'd better tell him. I've seen Charlie Ruskin. You what? I had to, darling. I thought he might know Maisie Barton, and I thought if I could talk to her... You told him about Maisie? Yes, and I could see he was interested, but he wouldn't help. What else did you tell him? Well, everything had happened. How she framed you. Look, darling, I really must go and explain everything later. Taxi! John! John! No. You're only out on bail. I know, don't worry. He's not a cop any longer. Look, don't worry. He knows what he's doing.
Good night, darling. Bye bye, my love. I don't give a damn about Jono. Whether he gets six years or six pounds in the burr box. All I want to know is, who fixed the frame? Who put you up to it, Maisie? Find out for yourselves, you bloody mugs. That's just what we're gonna do, darling. Hello. It's Lou. Hello, Lou. Did you get the kid? You got him off the train, good. What's his name? Oh, Bobby. Bobby Barton, eh? Same as his mum. Bobby, what are you doing to the no, kid? No, don't do anything yet. Just hang on to him, Lou. What are you playing at? Got a friend of yours in the line. Name of Lou? Remember Lou Waits? Good. I was afraid you knew so many men you might have forgotten him. What's he got to do with it? Oh, Lou and your kid have been having a nice little stroll through the daisies, won't they, Ben? God. But you know, Lou, it gets bored easily. Now, you wouldn't want anything to happen to your kid, would you, Maisie? <gasps> you bastard! You can't take it out of the jar! Shut up, you cow! That won't do your kid any good. Now, do you want me to tell Lou to get on with it? <laughs> Let me go! You'll be done over for this! Oh, yeah? Who by? Pretty Hoy? Give <laughs> it up, Lou. <laughs> now, listen, Maisie. Is a knife happy pawns worth more than your kid? Okay, Lou. <laughs> yeah, we can't go on arguing all night. Yeah, <laughs> give it to him. No! No! <laughs> Please! No! Hang on a minute, Lou. All right, Maisie. One last chance. <laughs> I'll tell you. It was Bertie. He made me do it. He fixed it. <laughs> he put the frame on Jono. <laughs> Pretty wild. <laughs> Hello, Lou. She spilled it. Yeah, it was oil. Yeah. Yeah, come on in. Right away. I don't know any Jim Ruskin. I've told you all I know. I've even put the knife in myself. Hello, love. How's business tonight? What are you doing here? Where's Bobby? Oh, no, you didn't fall for that bit of malarkey, did you, love? Well, you got on the train. I saw you. Nah. Trains make him sick. He got off at the next stop. He was phoning from outside. Oh. My God. You want to take it all back? 
Right, I'll go and let him in. Hey, grab her. Turn in there. Turn in the store. In there. Charlie, we found them. We found them in Bethnal Green. You're a genius, mate. Yeah, yeah, living on board, see. One of them ran right into me hands. Look, look, Shorty Sparks. And Charlie, look, look what he had on him. From the swag. And Lonigan and Hill are still there. There'll be a text at the end of the street, eh? A pain gonna keep your mouth shut. I put him down there. Don't, don't take it out of me. I know who you are, Charlie. I took your brother to the barn, but I never laid no end on him. It was Bertie Hoyle. I know that. And Leon Sale. Leon? Five to four, it was Leon that put Hoyle onto your brother. They're trying to get me top for it. Well, I find him shorty. At six this morning, Hill and Lonigan are taking the swag to Hoyle's Paddington Gaff. Leon fixed that up too. He said they'd get their whack. Me, I'm left roasting. Will Hoyle and Leon be there? Of course they'll be there. They'll be where the money's going, won't they? Hey, sorry, get your hand. Sorry! Sorry! Can't anyone get rid of you? Now look. He's given us all the evidence we need. Tell this Dr. Scarpa and we'll talk to the yard. Just you, me, and the witnesses. Put him inside. Yeah. Come on. And I wish you luck. Yeah, and if you've got a few quid, please, you'll get past the time. For God's sake, Charlie, don't work on your own. You're buying trouble. Lock him in. Come on, wait a minute. Why risk a life sentence for doing what the law will do for you? I'm setting up for Jim, mister. And neither you nor anybody else is going to stop me. Come on, you can oh. in Oh, it's you. Well, thanks for the photographic session. I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. How does it feel to be locked up, Papa? Getting quite a habit. You think you're safe here, don't you? Well, I ain't too anxious to go out and get me bond split, am I? If those boys knock off Dirty Hoyle, without me, you'll pay for Jim Ruskin. Bertie will slaughter him. And what do you suppose he'll do to you when he finds you here? Come on, let's get to work on this door. Well, it's about time. We've got to be at Paddington by six. Leon. Leon. Mr. Sale. Leon. Mr. Sale. I, I, I got them away. I mean, one of them skipped. Who? The, the, the little one. Uh, Shorty. Shorty. He. Charlie Ruskin's mob got him. They, they, they put him in a van, I saw. Well, that's done it. I'm going to tell him everything. Oh, you stupid bloody idiots. How come you were supposed to be looking after things? And have you got your taxi? Oh, oh. Said six. We won't rush it. Oh, we can't wait to get at them. <laughs> It's moved a bit. Have you got a sheet of paper? A sheet of paper? Yeah, that thing on the wall will do. Pass it over. Shove it under the door. I 
course, so did his mist. Yeah, that piece of tape. And watch both ways. Get dressed, will you? Sergeant Lewis. Tom. Yes, yes, look, it, it's me. Now, now listen, Jeff. Look, there's going to be a big punch-up at Bertie Hoyles. Hold on. It, never mind that. Now, listen, look here. Tell Bestwick to get over there right away with at least ten men. Uh, tell him he'll get all the Whitechapel swag. Tell him anything but get in there. Just here.
trick of CID. Look after these two, I want them both. Let them go. Come on, out of it, both of you. Rupert Street. Come on, get a move on. Come on. The squad's on its way. When it gets here, tell Sergeant Lewis I'm going after Leon Sale. Hey! Leave her. You're looking after me. of a holy Joe. Perhaps I should have taken some of those payoffs and I wouldn't have found myself in the mess I am now. How did you get here? Well, I'm on the run too. Didn't you know? I've broken bail. As a copper, I'm finished. I'm not spending the next few years being pushed around in jail. Are you looking for help, Mr. Jello? That's just what I want to talk to you about. Do you remember asking me about the silk shirts and the gold cufflinks? Uh huh. Had them all the time. So I see. It's just that it wasn't my policy to wear them. Uh huh. Anyway, I'm uh, I'm going to throw away all my old dirty clothes. I'm going to do myself up proper. I'd like to take a trip, enjoy life. So we might very well come to an understanding. If you were able to help me to get rid of these, then I might be able to help you. One each. They're heavy. Oh, come on. If we're in this together, you know, you'll have to pull your weight. <laughs> All right. But tell me, just out of idle curiosity, are you the paymaster general for Hoyle's lot? Hmm? Oh, I'm no criminal, my friend. I'm just in business, fetching and carrying business. Buying, selling things, moving things about. Uh, oh, now, just one moment. Um, I mustn't forget the book of words. It's something I uh, I never travel without, actually. It's uh, the affluent society. Modern economics is heavy stuff. <laughs> but I don't think you'd even get halfway through it. In fact, Mr. John. <laughs> Ah! 
And that's what... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Easy. Easy. Charlie's dead. I killed Bertie. Now, keep still. You can't go anywhere like this, can you? Anyway, now that Charlie's gone, you've nowhere to go, have you? What will they do to me? You helped us. We'll help you. Thanks, Jeff. An ambulance for this one. Ah, I thought you'd turn up. Well, get your little list out and check over that lot. Less, of course, the 500 you found in my house. Over here. That's right. Put him down there. This man is a witness, sir. He, uh, he saw everything. Sale shot him. This is Leon Sale? Yes, sir. One minor conviction six years ago for fraud. Hmm. Well? They are the Whitechapel notes, all right, sir? How'd you get on to all this? Well, sir, acting on information received. Yes, I see. Well, thank you, Chief Inspector. When you got that cut fixed up, uh, come and have a drink. 